This tutorial video is going to show you how to make a 3x4 laser file to create an acrylic plane. The first thing I'm going to do is create the edges of my plane or the outline using the rectangle tool. Uh, there's quite a few tools here. I'm just going to choose the rectangle and drag and drop. I'm going to go back to my selection tools. This is probably the tool I use the most out of everything. It's basically just our mouse cursor. Um, what we traditionally use in other programs. Once I click on my rectangle, I can go to the right side under properties and I can make it the size I want. So the width is going to be three inches and the height is going to be four inches. As you can see, the box changed. I'm also, since I'm lasering on a Universal Laser Systems um, laser, I'm going to take out the fill so there's going to be no fill and there's going to be a red stroke because that's where I, that's how I'm going to cut it out. That red is what tells the laser it needs to cut. Now as far as the image goes, I have just pulled an image off of the internet. It is black and white, which generally is the easiest to transfer into um, uh, vectors. And so I'm going to place that here. Now, a lot of people spend a lot of time looking for an import tool. Well, here in this program, it's called Place. Uh, let's see if I can find where it went to. Baby Yoda, there we go. So I just grabbed a Baby Yoda uh, image. As you can see, the size is all out of whack, but I can make that much smaller. Now, one trick is if you hold down Shift, when you're making something smaller, it keeps the proportions the same which is generally important when we're trying to not distort things. All right, still a little large, so let me make it slightly smaller. And as you can see, there's all this um, color in here that I can't even really see behind it. Well, the first thing I need to do here is trace this. So this program has this amazing tool called Image Trace, which you can see right now it's up here in the toolbar, I'm gonna to click that image trace button and I wanna make sure I get the image trace menu. So don't just click expand right now, click the trace menu. Now, currently, since preview is checked, it's giving me a preview of what it's gonna look like with the current settings. Now, this actually looks pretty good with the default settings, but many, many times, most of the time, I would say, you're gonna to have to come in here and play with the threshold to get it to, um, look the way you want it to look. So you're bringing in enough detail, but not too much detail. You can see as I open the threshold up, it brings in a lot of detail, which is actually too much compared to what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna kind of go to a place in this slider where I feel it's pretty good. Um, and actually the default value is almost perfect. There's an advanced side of the menu here where you can play with more uh, sliders to kind of get it to look really good, but I'm actually really happy with this, so I'm just going to bypass those. Um, you can play with these overlapping or abutting methods. For uh, for this, it's not going to make much of a deal. But one thing I do want to do is bring in strokes. Uh, if I unclick fill, it's probably going to go away and not work right, but I definitely want my strokes. I'm going to make those one point. And I'm also going to tell this to ignore the white. So all the white is going to be essentially transparent. And that's going to be, uh, sometimes it's extremely important, sometimes it doesn't matter so much. Once you're happy with this, you can unclick preview and click trace. But nothing's going to work until you click the expand button up at the top toolbar. Once you click expand, you get all your um, lines and your fill out of it. So at this point, this is nearly ready to send to the laser. I just need to package this up. Okay, I'm going to put it on my box, which is going to be my acrylic plane pretty soon. Um, it kind of gives you a guide. It gives you some pink lines about whether you're centered or not. Sometimes those are really good. Sometimes they're not as accurate as we would like. Um, I'm just going to leave a little gap at the top and a bigger one at the bottom. And for me, that's going to look good. Now, the one thing that we need to be aware of is anything that's fill is going to, um, well, hopefully by this point you guys know what, exactly what fill is doing. 
it's giving you a rastered effect, which is essentially dots per inch. And that dots per inch is more dots per inch with the solid black color all the way down to the, to the lower grayscale, you're getting very few dots per inch. The colors, on the other hand, there's really two colors we need to be aware of, blue and red. Blue engraves, red cuts. Uh, I'm going to leave that filled because I kind of want a little bit of a foggy appearance, but I'm actually going to lighten it up for fewer dots per inch. I'm going to go with kind of a gray that usually has a nice effect on acrylic, but um, you really have to kind of test and see what has the best effect. And I don't want any, actually don't want any stroke on this. I'm going to leave it just the effect. But if I were to do a blue stroke, um, it essentially would go around and outline everything that is that has the black or the nearly black fill. So sometimes that looks really nice, but in this case, I think it would be a little bit too much. So I'm going to put no stroke. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with this. The only thing left to do is to thin out the stroke. What the program calls for, what it asks for, is a 1,000th line weight where it's barely noticeable, but it is there and the computer will read it. So at this point, uh, this program is essentially ready to take over to the universal control panel on the ULS laser and to see how it looks there. Always, always, always check your laser file before you cut. Sometimes you'll see other things you didn't realize were there that you need to address or get rid of. Probably the most common mistake that people have is once they load something into their machine, they notice that there's all these red lines everywhere that they didn't see here. Well, if the stroke is black, it doesn't look hardly any different here in Illustrator, but when I take it to the machine, it's going to read all that black stroke as cut. And so there's been a lot of problems with a whole bunch of red and cuts that um, nobody knew why it was there. Well, that's why. So make sure if you're not using blue or red, if you're not telling it to actively cut or engrave, that you leave it no stroke. Now at this point, it's always a good idea to group your objects together so that you don't accidentally kind of uh, mash something up. I like to always put my piece with just a little bit of safety, um, safety from the edge, kind of just a little gap here. And I need to make sure that I'm using the right corner. And I usually do a 0.15 on both sides, 150 thousandths. So there's just a little, a little bit of gap in case my material maybe isn't exactly straight edged um, while still minimizing waste as much as possible. So at this point, I used Image Trace to uh, convert my image to a vector image. I placed it, sized it. All, only thing left to do now is to save as a PDF. PDFs seem to work really well with the universal control panel. Save that to a thumb drive, take it to the laser, load it up on the laptop, check it. If it's good, cut it. All right, so that is the lesson for today.